Warning, the podcast you're about to hear has a unique conservative perspective and may be politically incorrect, containing some controversy in its message. This episode may speak out against liberalism, socialism, the dark state, and religious organizations. It is possible that evil in politics, education, law, society, and religion will be discussed and exposed. However, we believe this podcast adds truth and value to a mature, disenfranchised audience who may be tired of apostate religions and wicked world systems. Listeners who are easily offended, overly sensitive, or have progressive leanings sympathetic to the topics we expose should be forewarned not to listen any further. We thank both those who choose to listen as well as those who choose not to listen. You've been warned. And now, let us get on with the show. We are live from right. Mesquite, Nevada. Yay. Freedom Friday hour. Freedom Friday hour. And today's date is November 9th. Can you believe it? I can. It's not even winter yet. And America is under snow and extreme cold. Because... We're in the grand solar minimum, not global warming, global cooling, the sun's quiet, it's going to turn dark into sackcloth. Yeah. Yep. So. So get some warm clothes. Yeah. Prepare spiritually, man. You can prepare physically if you want, but uh, be more concerned about the eternal Amen. Outcome. All this. Because it's going down. As uh, we're going to show you here in the next couple of stories. We're going to talk about some crazy stuff. Three of the stories have to do with children. Which Two is of scary them, in itself. Yeah. Very scary. Two of them are 11 years old. There's your number. 11. Those are children. And I forget what the other one is. He might 15. be 15. Okay. He's 15. And uh, we can see the demonic possession of these these kids, how it's just filtered down. That's not just adults or crazy men, you know, doing crazy stuff. Kids are too. <laughs> and um, we're going to talk about uh, some people in Sweden that are not very bright uh, these days. And uh, yeah, so it's crazy. Good times. Good times. Do you have a scripture that's about? I have some. Mm -hmm. uh, Deuteronomy 21 says, If any man has a stubborn and rebellious son who will not obey his father or his mother, and when they chastise him, he will not even listen to them, then his father and mother shall seize him and bring him out to the elders of his city at the gateway of his hometown. And they shall say to the elders of his city, This son of ours is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey us. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Then all the men of his city shall stone him to death. So you shall remove the evil from your midst, and all Israel will hear of it and fear. Um, Proverbs 30.17 says, The eye that mocks a father and scorns a mother, the ravens of the valley will pluck it out, and the young eagles will eat it. Exodus 21.15 says, He who strikes his father and mother shall surely be put to death. And... Proverbs 20:20 20, 20 says he who curses his father or his mother his lamp will go out in time of darkness and then Exodus 21 is the same as Levit similar to Leviticus 29 which says he who curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death So according to the biblical standards in the Old Testament all three of these children we're going to talk about today should be killed they should be eliminated to eliminate the evil from your midst these kids are totally evil totally demon possessed well, they're a menace to society sure of course these are only three stories could you imagine there's uh, a thousand more all around the world because mm. the whole globe is demon possessed now it's yeah. incredible before we get started uh there was a shooting in california uh, 13 are dead uh, as as I speak now, eleven dead in the um, inside the the bar mm -hmm. in California, 
uh, what was interesting, the numbers have kind of changed a little bit, but I had uh, I put this posted this on Facebook, and uh, I said so many occult numbers, twenty nine equals eleven. Originally they had the shooter as twenty nine years old. That since changed to twenty eight. Mm-hmm. But at the time I had posted it, they had uh, said his name his age was twenty nine, so that was eleven. And then though there are thirteen dead, including himself, they uh, they really stress that 11 are dead inside and that there was a, a sheriff sergeant unfortunately was killed but apparently he was killed outside yeah. and then um stupid killed himself and then the the times uh go from 11 20 when he started shooting to like uh you know something like that to sometimes 11 30 but you have your 11s uh you have your threes uh, there's also in one article I read where uh, a journalist was talking when he arrived at 3.30 mm-hmm, in the morning, mm-hmm. 3.30 oftentimes. And also, also I read uh, the number 30 that uh, he shot uh, 30 rounds or approximately 30 rounds. So there's a lot of occult numbers. When I say occult numbers, I mean, there's a lot of these, these numbers that have these hidden meanings. Yep. It's, it's almost a sign. Now, you think I'm crazy or whatever, and you may or may not agree with me, um, but... You know, when I when I see these kind of numbers in an article like this, to me they're almost like a a hidden flag Mm -hmm. that tells others that are aware of this stuff. Yeah, that was us. Mm -hmm. You know, this they're like hidden messages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was from us. This was a blood sacrifice, or this was a satanic deal, or you know, whatever. Uh, This guy was a former. Uh, Marine. Mm-hmm. The stories now say that he has uh, he he had suffered from uh, PSTD, yeah. uh huh, and things like that. Um, and you know, regardless, I'm being, I'm sure that's that's true. Uh, that uh, this guy, you know, had some problems. But you know, you can't rule out either the Manchurian Candidate stuff or the uh, ultra mind control things mm-hmm. that happen a lot. Uh, especially with people that are connected to the military, military families, either, um, you know, they get that where they get, they get that, that trigger and mm-hmm. they do stuff. Well, it's interesting because uh, they always end up killing themselves. Yeah. So you can't really talk about it afterwards. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Still don't know the motivation as of uh, right now. There's, there's nothing that says uh, motivation. Why, why he did that. But anyway, yeah, very uh, very tragic event. Once again, it was like a country western thing, a, a lot like what happened here in Vegas a year ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, not, of course, not to the extent you know here in Vegas, fifty eight people were killed, but uh, you know it's still quite a bit, a big number. You know, uh, 12, 13 including him, and a whole lot of other people in the hospital that may or may not survive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, these were these were young kids, college night. The, oh, the other thing is their hands were marked with a black X. Yeah, that's strange, huh? Yeah. I mean, they yeah. probably got stamped as they went into the... Uh... Well, normally, yeah, because anybody could take a... You could probably rub that off, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it's a bar, and on uh, Wednesday nights, they have college nights, so they allow people under 21 to come in, but they can't drink. And so they just, they write with a black marker, an X, a black X on their hands. Mm-hmm. I, I, Come in. There's just so many numbers there. There's 11s everywhere. There's there's 330s, 33s everywhere. Uh, originally, his age was 29, which equals 11. There was some other stuff. Um, I kind of forget that had popped up. But yeah, the black X. It's a, it's almost like it's a signal. Hey, yeah. If you if you're wondering who did this, it was us. Mm-hmm. You know, now I could be just kooky. I could be crazy because you know I got tin foil, you know, on my head. I don't know. I can't prove it, but to me, it just seems really weird. And I notice these numbers a lot. Not yeah. only me, but other people notice these numbers in these articles that kind of tell you. In fact, the, the three stories we're going to talk about, about these kids, the, the number 11 comes up in their age. Right? Yep. Never 10, it's never 12. It's always 11. Mm-hmm. Huh? Go figure. Huh? All right, Mr. Powell, are you ready? I'm ready. Oh, that, by the way, that was an excellent scripture you found. Good ones, huh? Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Of course, you know, that would never fly in our uh, socialist, liberal 
society that we have today. Yeah. But, but you know, the Bible does talk about disciplining your kid so yeah. that they don't end up, you know. Yeah, demon possessed. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for it. <laughs> you don't want you don't want your children to be demon possessed. You know, they just sit around and rebel and play video games and you know act stupid. You know, the demons are going to come. They're they're, they're going to gladly come in and habit that little flesh suit. Oh yeah. Don't matter what age they, they like are. them young. Yeah. So the first story up is uh, Brooklyn, Ohio. Brooklyn, Ohio. And so this uh, this horrible mother took the PlayStation away from this uh, beautiful little 11-year-old boy. How could she? How could she? How could she possibly discipline him by taking his beloved PlayStation away? He's 11 years old. So this it's not the first time this little idiot has done this. Mm -mm. He, he steals her car and he leads police on a high-speed chase. Yeah, that was in 2013. Yeah, he's done several of them. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, really. I mean, you, yeah, he's a very disturbed. You need kid. to cut his uh, cut his hands off or something. If you're not going to kill him, you know, cut his hands off. <laughs> or he can't do this. Oh, yeah, he's going to kill somebody. Yeah, I wish he would have killed himself in this this chase. I wish he would have crashed to a tree and killed himself. That would have been the best thing. But he uh, he's gonna he's gonna kill some innocent people on the road eventually, eventually somehow. This this is a little demonic monster. Uh, Brooklyn, Ohio. It's a Cleveland boy. He led police on his second high-speed chase within 13 months. His second one. And this is because his mother took away his PlayStation. Mm. Yeah. See, and he was arrested after he crashed. Yeah. Yeah, he crashed. And uh, real cocky about it, too. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he, he didn't crash because they were chasing. He says... I didn't crash because they were chasing me. I crashed because I wasn't paying attention. Mm. What a okay. punk. Right. I see he could have hurt somebody. Yeah. Yeah, he is. So he stole his mother's uh, 2013 Dodge Durango. That's a pretty big truck. Mm -hmm. About 1045 p.m. Sunday, after they got in an argument about her taking away his little PlayStation. So the mother goes to bed. Now, I, I don't understand. Now, he did this once before. You'd think she would lock those keys up or sleep with them in her underwear or something. But you, you got a little butthole like this running around. You wouldn't leave your car keys laying around. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it's, to me, it's just common sense. Oh, I just realized I said 2013 because I was looking at the Dodge Durango. I'm sorry. So oh, that's he all didn't. Right. That's okay. So the mother goes to bed. Then later on, she noticed that her keys were missing. <laughs> and she got a call from the boy's father saying he saw his <laughs> son driving. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I see my kid, my 11-year-old kid, driving a SUV on West 117th Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, oh, my keys are gone. Oh, my God. So the boy's father chased after uh, this idiot. And this boy tried to hide by pulling to a former fire station. Well, then a cop was there, and the cop sees somebody pull into the station, and he thinks, oh, maybe they need help, right? Nope. So he goes and um, to see if they need help, and then this kid immediately just takes off, and he starts driving the wrong way on Memphis Avenue. The wrong way. Blowing through stoplights, weaving in and out of traffic. Now, at 11 years old, the kid doesn't drive. No. Uh -uh. And he was going at... 87 miles per hour on some road. Yeah. And uh, at some some point, they say he was going between 70 and 90 miles per oh, hour wow. throughout the chase. That's that's. He's fast. 11 years old. He even, even an experienced driver doesn't have that kind of experience to run a vehicle at that speed. That speed. Yeah. Uh, going in and out of traffic and going the wrong way. I mean, that, this is some scary stuff. And mm -hmm. probably because it was so late at night, no one got killed. Yeah. So the officer lost sight of the SUV after uh, you know about four miles. And then another cop picked up the chase, lost, lost sight of him after that. And then another officer in another city spotted the, the idiot, started chasing him. So three different cops lost him. He was chasing this kid. And about 25 minutes later, this uh, demon crashed into a park truck. Mm -mm. Yeah. 
So thank God no one was in there. God, there was mm-hmm. no family, you know, yeah. innocent people. And now he crashed and he flips over the SUV, right? So you're thinking, oh, great. But hopefully he, he broke his little neck. He's done. Mm-hmm. You know, um, demon possessed. He's a zombie. He's gone. There's, he's just, it's gone. But no, he walks out of the SUV. He collapsed after he walks out. So they take him to uh, the police department. And all he has is scrapes and cuts. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that the way it goes, though? Yeah. So he, he told the police very arrogantly that he wasn't being chased at the time of the crash. And that he only crashed because he wasn't paying attention. Oh, my So it goodness. wasn't anything you guys did that made me crash. It was because I wasn't paying attention. So this is something else. Now, this is a big shock uh, to everybody. But this boy suffers they say he suffers but he's demon possessed attention deficit disorder right Mm -hmm. add uh you think hyperactivity disorder huh he's bipolar what's bipolar he's got he's got different personalities Mm -hmm. and this one i never heard of he has oppositional defiant disorder basically he's a rebel yeah just a punk just opposition defiant disorder. If you're going to oppose me, I'm going to defy you. He's only 11. Mm-hmm. He's bound to take lives. Yep. He's this, just... this kind of demon possessed person is not going to go through life and just float by and not hurt other people, innocent people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, anyway, it was the second time he stole his mom's car. Uh, the first happened in 2017, around the same time, October 26, mm. 2017. So in that particular chase, he was waiting for his sister to take him to school, and he decided he's going to steal his mother's car and sped away. And so then the mother jumped in, I guess, another car and followed him. She calls 911. She tells the dispatcher, I'm following my son. God, blah, blah, blah. scary. Yeah. State Patrol picked up the chase. And at one point, a trooper pulled up next to the boy and motioned for him to stop. And you know what he did? Hmm. He shook his head and just sped up. Wow. You know why? Because he has oppositional defiant disorder. Mm -hmm. That's the name they're going to give. Yeah, and it's a disorder. It's a disorder. It's a disease now. He's mentally ill. He's he's demon possessed. How he got that way, it's anybody's guess. How he got that way at this age. So he drives... Some 100 miles per hour. Wow, that's fast. On I-90, 100 miles an hour. At 10 years old. At 10 years old. Stunned drivers. People were calling, reporting, seeing this young boy speeding. His mother was still following him. Then the chase ends about an hour after he took off and no one was injured in the incident. That's unbelievable. Mm. Unbelievable. And two weeks before that incident, Ms. Capel. Wow. He, uh, he took his mother's car again and sped on Interstate 90 until three of his tires blew out. <laughs> yeah. And the reason why on that incident... He was reason, bored. He was bored. He was bored. Ugh, so his bored. that's three incidents that he's taken his mother's car. At what point does she go, I need to secure my keys? Yeah, exactly. I need, I need to maybe buy a wheel lock? A steering wheel lock? How about that? And you mm-hmm. lock your steering wheel up every night before you go to bed? You might want to think about doing that mm-hmm. because your son is demon-possessed. And he's going to kill somebody. Yeah, and you can't unring kills that himself. bill. Yeah. It's just annoying. So I I, I also question uh, the, this, the, the, the mentality of the mother. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the father who saw this kid driving around, uh, hey, he called my mom. Hey, I just saw our son driving. You know, right? That's a good dad. <laughs> I know. You know, hey, I just saw, I was on my way to, you know, pick up some heroin. And I just saw our kid driving. <laughs> Stupid people. And they breed. That's what's nice. Yeah. Yep. Yep, yep. Demon possessed people breeding. More demon-possessed people. Mm. Here's another story. A demon-possessed kid. Uh, This is the one that's 15 years old. Yep. 
The title is Soulless. They actually call him Soulless. He doesn't have a soul. That's pretty amazing when when the rest of the world calls a demon-possessed kid Soulless. Yeah. Hello. That's got to be pretty bad, right? Mm-hmm. This kid kills his mother. The sheriff says that this kid is one of the top three sociopaths he's ever encountered. That's pretty scary. You know that? <laughs> Yeah. What are the top three sociopaths he's ever seen? Co- total sociopath at age 15. Wow. Yuck. Yeah. He's charged with first degree premeditated murder. Now he strangled his mother over an argument about bad grades. Uh, hard to believe that that a demon possessed kid would get bad grades. Yeah. But you know what's even more sick? Is that he actually loaded her car, her body into a car and drove it to a nearby church and then he buried her there under a fire pit. No remorse whatsoever. Ugh. Yeah. Strangled her. Strangled her. Uh, apparently he showed no signs of remorse. He even bragged about his attempt to cover up the crime. Mm-hmm. That's what the police said. He bragged about how brilliant he was. Age 15. Yep. So this... Uh, Volusia County Sheriff Mike Chitwood described this punk as one of the top three sociopaths he's ever, ever encountered. Mm-hmm. And you're right. Yeah, he just buries under a fire pit. Don't yeah. care. And then he faked a uh, burglary yeah, with he's... the help of two of his friends. And then they called the cops that afternoon and said the mom was missing. Jeez. And then later on, he confessed to the uh, to the murder. Wow. This Chitwood guy, the sheriff, said to watch how cold and callous and calculating he was, I think was probably the most shocking thing for all of us. No sign of remorse whatsoever. At age 15. Yep. And very proud of what he did. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. He confesses to killing his mother. Very proud of it. Yeah. And he said that he uh, did a really good job staging everything. Yeah. Faking the burglary, getting his friends. Anyway, he's charged with first degree premeditated murder. Remains mm. in jail. Now, hopefully, hopefully they'll charge this little demon possessed punk and throw as an adult. Key. Yeah. And keep he really him locked should. up. You know, because this is an adult crime. Oh, yeah. So he should be tried as an adult. And throw him in, uh, in jail and lock, you know. What are Get do rid of the key. Who's, who's going to take this thing? Mm. You know? The, uh, there's other two 17-year-old friends were charged with acting as accessories to first-degree murder uh, when they, you know, when they helped them stage and fake that burglary and stuff. So I wonder what their deal is, why they got involved in it. And they're under supervised house detention and will wear ankle monitors. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Hmm. Something so. else. Yeah. Hmm. Crazy. Uh, I crazy. mean, these, these are just crazy stories, folks. This is, this is the collapse of this society. And it's not just America. It is global collapse. Yeah. And it's just not adults. There are children involved children. in this, too. Mm-hmm. Their children as victims and their children as suspects. Mm-hmm. Ah, unbelievable. Unbelievable times that we're in. You know, um, it's meant to be this way. It's meant to get worse. The love of people, their love grows cold. Yeah. Um, the, the things happening on the earth, earth changes. I hope you guys are watching some of these people talking about earth changes. And their conscience is seared. Yeah, people's conscious are oh, seared. Oh, that's awful. It's 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 biblical prophecy. It's supposed to happen. It's hard to to live in these last times and watch it um, without being affected by it. You know, just emotionally affected by it, and uh, watch it all go down. But that's that's what's happening. Um, yeah, so it's almost like the like the Holy Spirit's just being lifted off. You know, mm, yeah. In these last days, it's this really is the darkness that has come on this world. Very heavy darkness, mm-hmm. and so we we have to keep we have to keep overcoming, 
really through Christ and through the blood of his testimony, but we have to keep overcoming and so we can be found worthy on that day when he returns. Otherwise, we're, we're no better than these demon-possessed children. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to take a short commercial break, and then we'll be back. But I want to tell everybody that two things, two musical things are released. Mm-hmm. Um, Mesquite Cafe, yeah. right? That project... We released a, uh, well, it's a CD now, too. I wasn't going to do a CD, but it is now. Yeah. So uh, it's it's a, a musical EP with Celtic music. It's beautiful harp-based, acoustic guitar, harp-based, uh, bass, Irish drums. Really beautiful. There's no lyrics, no singing. Uh, all four of us, all the musicians on there, were all Christians and worship bands back in 2010, 2011. Really pretty stuff, and I uh, I had found a little treasure trove um, on one of my files that I had online hidden, you know, off off my computer, and they were uncompressed files. So I was able to take them and master them, and then produce this really pretty stuff. It sells for uh, I want to say six ninety nine. $6. On Amazon, I yeah, money. and the only reason it, we had to do that because Amazon charges at least five bucks to make the CD, <laughs> you know, and then uh, shipping and everything. So on Amazon, uh, it should it should be live right now. It's mm-hmm. called uh, under Mesquite Cafe. It's called Celtic Chill, and you can get the disc. But um, I have a release date for November twelfth for the uh, EP, but it's already out. It's already out on iTunes, Google Play, um, Spotify, all these other things. So if you want to get it, It's really nice can. music. It's very, very relaxing. relaxing. Mm-hmm. Very nice, pretty. The other thing is uh, the last song I wrote called Why Won't You Listen? What? Why, why Won't You <laughs> Listen? Uh, that I have scheduled to release on, I believe, the 19th. And that's already out on some things. I think it's already out on iTunes, maybe Google Play, some things like that. But that's going to be released the 19th. Obviously, that's not a CD. It's a single. It's just one single. And um, I'll play that at the end of the show. So you can hear it again if you want. Mm -hmm. So those are the two things. And that's my commercial break. All righty then. Yeah. Yeah. And as usual, we still have uh, Demons in My Marriage Bed. If you haven't read it, please read it. Mm Mm-hmm. How to deal with these demons. We also have Eyes to See Unseen Enemies. If you haven't read it, please read it. It talks about what 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 has happened to the church, yeah. what you're seeing here. And it goes along with the other book, Christianity of Blasphemy. Yep. So, enough of that. Back to the stories, Ms. Capel. All righty. This Thanks. one... Is in Arizona. 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 This boy is 11 years old. What? What's 11. the number? 11, 11, 11, 11. Not 10, not 12, 11. 11. See what I mean? It's like you, you, I see these numbers of these stories and it's almost, it screams out to me, this was us. Mm-hmm. This is us doing this. We did this. Arizona boy, 11. Who does he kill? He kills his grandmother before killing himself after being asked to clean his room. Okay, so we got one kid whose PlayStation was taken away. Mm -hmm. He's pissed off and he's driving like a maniac. He hasn't killed anybody yet, but he will. Then we got another kid who's mad because uh, he got accused of having a bad grade. This kid was asked to clean his room. Right. Mm-hmm. This this is the future. This is the future of America. It's all about the children, right? Future of the world. Oh, <laughs> uh, thank God. Uh, every kid's not like this. Not yet, anyway. Hopefully, we'll be gone <laughs> before that happens. Eleven-year-old uh, Arizona boy. Now he shot his mima mm. in the back of the head, and then he killed himself. And that was after Mima asked him to clean his room. How dare she? Mm-hmm. How dare she? Now, Doyle is the grandfather. All right, he's the Opa. Doyle, who along with his wife, Yvonne, they're both 65 years old. 
They have custody of their 11 year old grandson. What does that tell you about their kid? No mommy and daddy. No mommy and daddy. What happened? Either the daughter or the son has a kid. Where are they at? Who knows? They could be deceased. I shouldn't judge, right? But these grandparents are now raising this little demon. Mm-hmm. So um, Doyle, the grandfather, Opa, he told the police that his grandson fired a bullet into the back of his grandmother's head. Uh, yeah, Opa, well, yeah, he was sitting on the couch at the time. Yeah, sitting on the couch at the time. So he says that he first chased his grandson after he shot his wife, but then he heard another gunshot and he went back to tend to his wife. Smart thing. And then they found that the boy had turned the gun on himself. Hmm. Now, the weapon, the gun, had belonged to the grandfather. So once again, hmm. probably if you got an 11-year-old punk who don't want to clean his room, you probably want to secure those firearms. Yeah. Um, Meh, but that kid would have used something else. Yeah, you know I mean? would have used a knife or something. Authorities are investigating the incident. Yep. Police said they have found nothing that would indicate the boy wanted to commit acts of violence prior to the shooting. Yeah, it just happened. <laughs> yeah, nothing to indicate that he would want to do this. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I don't believe that. There has to be some kind of a sign that this kid was um, violent. Yeah. You would think. You would think. So that's three good demon-possessed children. Children's. Now, this doesn't have anything to children, but it has something to do with 4,000. I can tell you where there's 4,000 stupid people Lazy people. <laughs> stupid lazy people on this great flat earth. Are you ready for a chip implant? No. Don't no, want one. Don't Didn't you want, want my dogs to have one? No. And there's. I posted an article on Facebook last week where uh, uh, this came out of our local news, Ms. Capow, mm-hmm. where they had uh, x-ray of a, of a dog's uh, elbow, little front leg. Yeah, where a the, little chip in the it. The chip had moved. And they were saying these chips do move occasionally. So when you take your pet to the vet, you should scan for them and find them. This particular dog had been chipped and no one knew where the chip was because, um, you know, it didn't show up. But it had been chipped, but it had moved into its elbow. So I'm thinking, wow, if it could do that on a pet, could you imagine what it could do to a human? It could move right into your heart or to your brain now, couldn't it? And that's probably what they want to do. Probably. These these people are something else. I, and you talk about, like you mentioned the word lazy. It's the epitome of laziness. Mm-hmm. They want to get chipped because they don't want to have to use the, 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 the key to unlock the door or a that's card. Right. I mean, you just wave my hand. Or I can buy a soda and a Big Mac by just doing my... My hand, because I'm too lazy to reach into my pocket and get the, what you call, uh, money. Yeah, and then they can get a robot to feed them. My gosh. Yeah. So are you ready for a chip? Apparently a lot of people aren't. I got a lot of reaction on this one that said no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, no. So anyway, I'm not making fun of people in Sweden. I'm just making fun of these 4,000 people who are complete idiots in Mm -hmm. Sweden. Sweden. Right. So the article goes like this. You walk into a grocery store, you pick up eggs. No smartphone? No problem. Let me stop there. If I buy eggs anywhere, my phone is not in the equation. (laughs) You know what's in the equation? The money in my pocket is in the equation. And if, if, if I don't have the money in my pocket, then that plastic in my wallet's in the equation. But my phone has nothing to do with it. Mm Mm-mm. But apparently here, you're going to pick up eggs, you better have your phone to pay for your eggs. So you swipe your hand across a reader and the amount is deducted from your bank account. Don't like that. Do you want these fools to have your bank account, your whole life, connected to a chip in your hand? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. You know, these 11-year-old boys are shooting their grandma in the back of the head. They're still in cars driving 100 miles an hour. They have no regard for life. They're strangling their parents. Do you think 
they're going to have a problem cutting off your hand to go to the ATM for 200 bucks? No. If that sounds far-fetched, you probably haven't heard about Sweden recently. Thousands of people have reportedly had chips implanted in the body. See, These the only the, kind of chips I like are the kind you eat. I like that, yes. Yeah, I like... Um, but these thing. invasive things? No, 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 no want those chips. No, no. Give me chips and a hot dog. Uh, they were but, good to go. But not this uh, stuff. There's a company called Biohacks. Mm-mm. Even the name is several. Biohacks? <laughs> really? I want you messing with me? Mm-mm. They've already installed about 4,000 chips in the stupidest people on this green, flat earth. They started just below the thumb. They can use the implant to open secure doors. They can pay for tickets. Oh, my goodness. And they can share emergency information with medical personnel. Because I can't tell you that I'm allergic to penicillin. Mm. Or I can't wear a bracelet. That says that. I need a chip. Or like this poor dog that was lost. They couldn't find the owner because they didn't think it was chip because the chip had moved from between its shoulders to its elbow. Mm -hmm. Causing it problems. The chip is about the size of a Tylenol pill. That's too big. The procedure costs 180 bucks. It's like getting a tetanus shot, they say. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So it's a secure way of ensuring that a person's digital identity is linked to their physical identity. Why? So it enables management. Okay. Uh access management in a way that protects individuals' self-sovereignty but allows users to control the privacy of their own online activity. Right. That doesn't even sound right. Yeah. Mm -mm. It doesn't sound right. No. Another doctor agrees that getting chipped is practical and even advantageous. As far back as 2014, dang it, experts have outlined a number of benefits, some medical and some consumer-based. This is Mm. beneficial, folks. Yeah, right. Yeah. From a medical perspective, this is what Dr. Larry.com says. This yeah. guy's a moron. Dr. Larry Burchett is a fraud. Mm-hmm. He's a medical expert fraud. He's an author. He's a fraud. He's a shield. And he works for the Swedish government as a shield. Mm-hmm. He says... From a medical perspective, in the ER, we have patients come in every day who are confused or comatose. How do you come into ER if you're comatose? Mm. And we cannot get any medical history from them. Really? Well, if I go into the ER because I'm having a heart attack, you don't need my medical history right then. Mm -mm. You just need to stop the freaking heart attack. Mm -hmm. And then when you want to bill me, And you want to know if I have insurance, then you get all that information. But if I go into the medical room because I got bit by a rattlesnake, I just need you to stop the venom. Yeah. Dr. Burchart, you fraud. Put those life-saving things, you know, that you you would try to work on that first. Exactly. But not him. Dr. Larry says, oh, they come in confused and we can't get medical history from them. And then he says... If we had access to that info because they have a chip in their skin, that would be life-saving. Mm. You're an idiot. What an idiot. I just want to kick him in the rump. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm being nice. Uh, let's see. He says, we implant many things now. Insulin pumps, pain pumps, birth control under the skin. That's I like what he, what he says. says here. There are uh, risks of infection, but they are very low. And I don't think those risks are a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it happens to you. You know what's... You what's get a little... sepsis and stuff like that. That's what infections are about. What's a little sepsis? What's a little... Yeah. What's a little turning purple and dying? What? You know. You know, if that happens, at least they'll be able to read the chip in your butt. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh. California and Missouri have already implemented regulations on chip implants. Dear Lord, that's scary. Good Lord, Cuckoo Fornia. Oh, my God. They got a new governor, too. Cuckoo, California got him a new Democratic governor. He used to be the mayor from San Francisco. (laughs) Well, there's Uh, pictures of him and his family, his lovely wife and children. You really think he's straight? No. Really? 
Yeah. Have you seen pictures of him? Yeah. Uh-uh. He, he was the mayor so. of San Francisco. He was the first in the nation to grant um, marriage license to same-sex marriage before it was legal. And now mm. he's the governor. Yeah. Good times. Good times. I love Cuckoo, California. Also, Colorado has their first openly gay male governor. Yeah. And there's some other chick who's a uh, lesbian uh, somewhere else. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, Native American lesbian. You got to use all these these things for your benefit when you're in the uh, in the satanic Illuminati uh, poop hole that we're in. <laughs> these people are something else. <laughs> they really are. They're they're funny. They're fu- oh, in the great state of Nevada, which I live for the first time in twenty years, now has a Democratic governor. Huh? Oh yeah, first time in twenty years. This guy's a piece of work. His he his whole campaign is run on. Uh, I'm going to oppose Trump. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And what does he use for his pitcher, his his victory pitcher? What does he use? Him and Reno at the Gay Pride March. Mm, nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anybody say man sauce? Oh. No, oh, yeah, that's what these guys are. They're just man sauce. Nasty. Oh, God. Yeah, they are nasty. They're just gross. Yeah. Anyway, I got off topic here. Cuckoo Fornia in Missouri. Misery. The technology has come under serious scrutiny. They are illegal if an employer or medical professional mandates their use. I would hope so. The RFID chips will work like the ones you might implant surgically in a pet or a staple to a FedEx box. I didn't know they did that. Uh, They're controversial because of long-term ethical implications. So California says you cannot force a company, you can't force them or medical, you can't force them to do that. Uh, that's actually a good law. I shudder at the thought of a world where uh, vanity cyborg commerce becomes a game of one-upmanship. He challenges you going to have the highest percentage cyber by weight or wattage. Oh, that's a good point. Um, that's uh, somebody who's a, a consultant at some technology company. Mm-hmm. Uh, they say for disabilities, it may make sense in specific use cases like handicap door opening. I draw the line well before paying for things, but I don't want an iPhone embedded anywhere in my body. That's right. Yeah. Mm-mm. Yeah, yeah. So most experts agree there's some limited use for medical reasons. A chip that monitors blood pressure or diabetes could be very interesting. Interesting, yeah. not beneficial. Exactly. Exactly. Um, somebody says, uh, I could imagine that morphing over to the tracking of prisoners and from there a dystopian vision of assigning tracking chips to political rivals. And then, of course, to the general populace, like social security numbers. I'd rather hope not to be alive when that happens. So here's a person who has a tinfoil hat on. Mm -hmm. They can uh, be on, you know, the deal. But the bottom line, there's at least 4,000 stupid people in Sweden who have accepted all of those implications. Mm -hmm. Right? So Because they like the convenience of all that. Oh, yeah. So they say, well, maybe they're already sick and tired of carrying around a smartphone all day. So, you know, they got to do something. Yeah. Oh gosh, that's a, no that's thanks. Un- no thanks. Believable, unbelievable. So yeah, makes me want some corn chips though. Some Fritos do do sound good. <laughs> I want to implant them right in my gut. Yeah, well there you go. Right in my duodenum. Duodenum. <laughs> Very good. That's you a know, thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's a thing. That's a thing. I used to have one. Oh, I think you my still body. have it. I don't. I lost it in the Mandela effect. This last new change, mm. I don't have duodenum or an esophagus anymore. I just have, it's like a... <laughs> a big it's tube? A, it's like a big spike tube now. It's weird. And too See? different than your esophagus? It's totally different. And it's it's called, um, it's called uh, melophonous now. Ah. Thank okay. you, Mandela. Thank you for the effects, Mandela. We love you. <laughs> Okay. Um, Ciao, babies. Ciao. Good night. I yelled and I screamed. Nearly spoke things of sea. All just to get your attention. Whispered in your ears, 
And for the life of me, I just can't figure out 